In 1997, just 30% of Americans supported the legalization of same-sex marriage. 70% opposed it. By 2021, that number totally inverted itself, with 70% in favor and only 30% opposed. How did this happen? One explanation could be an increasingly non-religious nation. As the paleoconservative legend Pat Buchanan warned in 2001, quote, the only way the gay rights movement can succeed in making society accept homosexuality as natural, normal, moral, and healthy is to first de-Christianize that society, and they are making headway. Well, let's look at the numbers. From 2009 to 2019 alone, the amount of self-reported Christians in America dropped from 77% to 65%, this figure continues to decline. Yet those numbers still don't add up. Christianity is on the decline, sure, but how can a country where 65% of Americans still identify as Christian support same-sex marriage at a rate of 70%? How can a country with a sizable population of conservatives support same-sex marriage in such large numbers? The answer lies in the fact that both American churches and the American conservative movement have failed to protect tradition. Whereas Christians and conservatives were once ardent opponents of the sexual revolution and big defenders of traditional relationships, they have now backed off, and we are witnessing the result. For one, many American churches now skirt around the topic of homosexuality. They refuse to teach those scriptures, they avoid talking about those topics in their sermons for fear of outcasting their members, and the result is a church body that does not hold biblical beliefs on the topic of homosexuality. Some churches just openly embrace the LGBT agenda. For instance, some Episcopal American churches began offering a right to recognize homosexual relationships in 2012. They're not alone. The United Methodist Church is famously undergoing a split on the very topic of homosexuality. Then, of course, is the issue of progressive Christianity, with denominations like the Unitarian Universalists openly waving rainbow flags. With behavior like this, it's no surprise why a majority Christian nation supports same-sex marriage. The churches allow this. In the conservative movement, the takeover of the LGBT has been even stronger, more militant, and more radical. As recently as the 2016 election cycle, virtually every Republican candidate campaigned on supporting traditional marriage. But then-candidate Donald Trump would make history by holding an LGBT flag at a Colorado rally in 2016, and the floodgates were open. LGBT politics would soon reach the Trump White House, with the administration touting its plan to decriminalize homosexuality worldwide and declaring itself the most pro-LGBT administration in history. So too came the appointment of Rick Grinnell, who Trump touted as the nation's first openly gay cabinet member. It didn't take long before the official Trump 2020 merch shop began selling rainbow-colored Make America Great Again merch just one cycle after Trump held the LGBT flag at one rally. This trend has continued beyond the Trump presidency, with Ronald McDaniel announcing the new RNC Pride Coalition for the 2022 midterms. Combine this with a plethora of figures within the movement who openly advocate for LGBT politics, and it's safe to say that the alphabet agenda has quickly become normal within American conservatism. Yet there is an inherent contradiction here. The conservative coalition is meant to be comprised of, well, conservatives. Conservatives are the defenders of tradition, as the name suggests. And it's still true that Christians and social conservatives do make up the vast majority of the conservative coalition. So how can the LGBT right and traditional Christian conservatives exist within the same movement? We quickly find that the LGBT right has no desire to coexist with actual Christians and conservatives. Everywhere that the LGBT agenda is normalized, traditional conservatives and Christians are outcasted and blacklisted. This has happened in every institution of society, and it is now happening within the conservative movement. The LGBT right has been transparent about this. For instance, 
Rick Grinnell recently said of Pat Buchanan, quote, In 1992, I was working on the Bush quail re-election campaign on national staff, and I sat and listened to Pat Buchanan speak at the Houston Republican Convention. He outlined a strategy where gay people were not welcomed within the Republican Party. I can remember sitting there listening and vowing to not allow that to stand. Now, 29 years later, we were at an event where the former president of the United States and the first lady are welcoming us and hosting 600 influential gays, lesbians, and their straight allies, end quote. Our movements disaffected liberals like Douglas Murray, Rob Smith, and Carlin Borizenko have parroted this sentiment and consistently ridicule social conservatism on a regular basis. The memo is clear. The conservative movement does not believe that there is a place for Christians, social conservatives, and traditionalists anymore. The LGBT right is a bulwark to push actual conservatives out of the movement. The good news is that so long as conservatives put their foot down, this agenda will not succeed. The religious right still far outnumbers the LGBT right. Further, the religious right offers the only serious means by which to counter the sexual radicalism of today. People who embrace the sexual revolution in all of its forms are in no place to reverse it. Christian conservatives are the only faction capable of offering a serious pushback to today's left-wing sexual agenda. But what this will take is a serious and coordinated pushback from the core conservatives on LGBT issues. So the question is, will real conservatives be brave and bold enough to take that stand against their own establishment? Will real Christians be willing to take a stand against their progressive counterparts? That waits to be seen. I'm Vince Dow for the American Populist Union. Be sure to like and subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.